All right, everybody, what's going on? We are here again with another Hot Fire Zoom. That's not Zoom, it's stream, y'all. I'm tripping. But it's another Hot Fire episode. Either way, I'm at the house, I'm at the crib. Got another guest for y'all. You know, we've been we've been doing it with the guests this season. It's just been like boom, 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 boom. We've been, we've been, we've been keeping it going, and I love to see that. So before I get into anything, let's go ahead and go over today's title. All right. This one is gonna be a good one because. This world, everybody wants to be a star. Everybody think they got what it takes. And I'm here to tell you, y'all don't. But I'm not going to be here by myself, though. We're going to get into that in a second. So today's episode is titled, So You Want to Be a Star. All right? The meme reads, everybody want to be a star, but can't handle the pressure that comes with it. All right? And the inspiration comes from a meme I read recently. It was talking about when we always praying to God for favor and all this stuff. And it was like, pray for the thick skin that comes with it. Because if you don't, you know, you'll get all the, the spotlight, you get the glory, you get the, the highlights. But then when the haters come, which they are, you, you going to lose it. You're going you gonna to go crazy. We also talk about how social media is in these days and how easy it is to go viral. And another inspiration is a quote that I really like. This said, reach for the stars. You might just be one. But I'm not trying to ramble all day. I have a guest today, y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and let him. He didn't pull it up on us. So let me go ahead and introduce him. Vinny, what's going on? Yes, I love this. Thank you by the big guest energy. I like it. Thanks. A big season. I appreciate uh, the invitation to the conversation here, man. Yes, sir. So before we get on, your name is Vinny. Tell the people where you're from. Anything else you'd like them to know? Uh, yeah, all right. I'm from Staten Island. I live in Brooklyn. Um, I got my start in TV um, in the mid-90s um, as, a, as a data engineer at Staten Island Community Access TV um, That while I was in high school. And uh, then in, uh, in the late 90s, in 99, I created um, I, my agency, and I was a casting agency. And I worked with um, MTV and Fox news on a show called Hannity and Combs like so I would travel a country and I would it was my job as like an audience coordinator to figure out who could ask questions political questions because it was kind of a, an interesting job for me but but I had this cool barometer for like what was appropriate um what was uh what needed to be asked what needed to be talked about so it was a really cool sort of um uh job because it allowed me to cast choose or lose for MTV, which brought Gideon Yego to MTV News. And, and then with MTV News, I got to go on and, and, and hire Suchin Pak and Sway and then launch an MTV News, the MTV talent department where Punked came from and, and um, Osborne's and Newlyweds and Laguna Beach and, and, and so many other of the big shows that I got to be a part of, the Tom Green show. And so funny, I can just sit here and like list so many of them, while and out for sure. Um, I got to work. I got to bring the Cannon from MT from Nickelodeon to MTV originally to host TRL, by the way. But uh, but then, as as fate would have it, uh, and a lot of fortitude, by the way, uh, because uh, I'll talk about that later. But uh, it took a lot to get wild out, you know, greenlit to MTV. But Nick Nick had fortitude, and I got to learn from the greatest people. I can I'm, I can tell you I, I I got to cast Beyonce in her first acting role in Hip Hopera. I got to oh work wow with Andre three thousand um, the first time. I got to work with Mr. Miyagi with Pat Morita. God rest his soul. Um, <laughs> so many awesome people working you know in that job at MTV um, making pop culture. And um, I used to get bitter and salty, you know, thinking that MTV lost that audience. But the truth is, is they're they're right here listening to podcasts. They're right there, you know, in your scroll on every single social media platform, whether it's LinkedIn or TikTok or any of the other, you know, 10 in between. So right. it's uh, to, your, to your point, you know, when you talk about stars and I, I bring this up when people ask me about stars, I have to acknowledge the galaxy that stars live in, right? And I think we can all agree that that our galaxy got infinitely larger with the amount of platforms and ways we can experience each other and can connect with each other. So right. it only makes it only if so if we can acknowledge that 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 grew, we can only imagine how many more stars there are. So I'm excited to talk about this. <laughs> well, first of all, let me just go ahead and give you a round of applause because not <laughs> only is your resume like lit, 
But you just gave my audience an example of how to do an elevator pitch. That was an elevator pitch. You know, they teach you that it's like you always got to go somewhere. You got to like put yourself on the elevator pitch. I didn't do stuff with yeah. podcast stuff. And, and I'm a good talker. And I was like, you know, I think I can boom, boom, boom. But that that was the elevator pitch. That was it. <laughs> I appreciate it. That must have been that a was- long elevator. That's like a New York elevator ride, you know. That's the couple of that was a long one. <laughs> Look, that was the blueprint for the elevator pitch. So we're gonna get into your accolades a little later. Now, you talked about podcasting. I've had a lot of podcast hosts this season, not even on purpose. But when we talk about podcasts, how did your podcast even come about and what is it? Yeah. Well, by the way, just to acknowledge what you said, you had a lot of, po- I think there are more people who now identify as podcasters. So there's the same amount of people in your life. They're just now have a word. They now have an action, a verb, a thing that they can do that they all have in common. And it happens to be podcasting. So it's, it's cool when you think about how this, how, how new this media form has sort of, ha- how this has really changed the way we communicate, even to the point of how we're perceived. You know, right. if we use podcasting as a method of communication, we're instantly podcasters. The answer to your question is in 2006, Fat Man Scoop and I and his wife, Shonda, back then, now X, um, created a show, a podcast called Man and Wife. And I said, Scoop, it would be really funny if you guys recorded this, not in the booth. Don't bring her to this radio state. Don't go to the radio station and record it because you have access to I do have equipment. I think it's funnier if you if it's in your bed. I think it's funnier. It's like there's like springs and like we kind of know it's in your room. And I, it could be like a video podcast situation. And he loved that idea. And um, I can go on and on and on about the develop. You know, when you develop something, you have to you have to um, uh, you have to have things that you can say no to to say yes to. So like you know, I think we we tried recording it in the kitchen, the bedroom, the bathroom. The, bed, the bedroom was definitely most successful. And, and in 2006, we sold that to MTV. And in 2007, it was the first time I ever converted a podcast into a television show mm-hmm. uh, called Man and Wife, uh, which is like it was a sex advice from a couple's perspective, you know, um, from Scoop, from Scoop and his wife, by the way. I, I grew up watching Pinsky, you know, Dr. Pinsky and uh, uh, uh was the guy Andrew Drew? Was his name Drew? Drew uh, Carolla. Adam Carolla. That's who it oh, is, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I, I mean? Like those, like those. I sneak like, and watch that show. <laughs> yeah, right. But I was like, this is <laughs> this is 2007. That that was the, so. So to be honest, to answer your question, that's where it started for me. Was the power of podcasting? And it took me more than 15 years to be confident enough to start doing it for myself. Um, and to, in 2020, I launched my podcast trailer. I got hit with. A lot of phone calls for for me to help people develop their podcast because they saw they saw that I was doing it for myself, even though I right. hadn't released an episode yet. So people talk mm-hmm. about how do you monetize a podcast? How about like how do you monetize just a trailer? It's just about like it's awareness, right? right? It's about a great title. It's about 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 knowing what your audience is looking for. I call my podcast. I have a podcast. Like there's nothing over creative about that it's actually very literal and i want people to know, it's like a tag i want people to know what i have and i was able right. to take that and convert it into a tv show so i have i have a podcast on tv which is distributed on cox and comcast and direct tv via the bespoke tv network um, and about like a dozen other of the avod the advertising video on demand ott networks so they have like a, a tv series because i have a podcast and then I took I have a podcast.com and turned that into a platform for independent podcast discovery. So like I invite any podcasters who are listening to I just launched it. I just launched it in April of 2022 that we're in right now. And um, I'm actively looking for independent podcasters to um, amplify, to create featured articles on, to get you just more visibility, backlinks and and drop in you know, um, your feed so that, you know, my, my, my world has access and I can use, I can use my, I have a podcast show. It started off as like a simple little conversation about creativity as a beacon for opportunity. Cause I have network execs. I have, I have platform execs. I have talent. I have, I have lots of people in, in my, in my sphere from all the different types of shows that I've cast and created and been a part of just the world respectfully that I've been a part of. So, but, um, it's been a long journey. It's, and, 
it. Man, when you're a podcaster, you know, I didn't realize the work, the self work that, you know, I, I'm a, I came at it from like a performance coach mentality. Um, I came at it, you know, it was a little bit easier. Now, you know, it took me about a year to, to figure out how to get comfortable. But I'll tell you what, for me, um, being a podcast guest is making me a stronger host. Like knowing how I can show up, knowing what, you know, I, how I can offer value or um, how much control we have over creating energy that comes from this conversation. That's that's something that you don't get to experience, you know, solely as as a host. So I, I love this part of being in the podcast community and um, I, I'll never give it up. I'm bummed I didn't start sooner, you know, says every single person who who's in this right now. <laughs> First of all, this, this, this is going to be a co good conversation because you just you just said a bunch of stuff that we're going to unpack as we go along. But I, I'm definitely excited because this, this is the type of conversation I like to have, especially when you made the comment about being a guest, because going this is season six. But for me, going into season five, I think it was before I started season five, I was I took a three month break because I do my show seasonally and I took a three month break. And on that when I was out, I remember going on, I called it podcast too. I was on everybody's YouTube channel, podcast, just getting myself out there more and, you know, just, just, just going on people's stuff. And there's some people who I told them, I said, when now's they turn. So now this season is kind of like, I'm not going to lie. And I said this early in the season, I was, I was one of those people that was so caught up in trying to get the bigger names on my stuff. But when I looked back and I reviewed season five, my best episodes, whether it was content wise and even stream wise, was people I knew personally. So I wanted this season, you know, obviously I said I'm still going to have the big name people, but I wanted to also give back to those people that looked out for me um, in between those seasons. So it's definitely something, you know, that I want to get into as far as that and keeping this going, you know, because mental health has become a big topic and it's become more popular, but still not one, not for me. Cause I, and like I said, I'm not, a, I'm a very humble person. I, I'm nobody can do my stuff like I do it, but also with decision fatigue. And this, that's my main goal now for young millennials, young mental health conscious millennials who struggle with decision fatigue because we are bombarded with just so many options and decisions. And, this topic here. So you want to be a star? We about to put it to the test because we got to get to some. We got to bring some stuff out. So because everybody can't handle the spotlight. People have joked with me since I was little, and they'd be like, "Oh, you are gonna be a celebrity? You are gonna be famous because you're just your personality and how you are." I said, but also the other side too. The other side when everybody making up stuff about you, lying yeah. on you, um, not not messing with you, believing yeah. anything they hear off rip. And I told some of my friends, I said, "Y'all couldn't handle that." Y'all yeah. talk about saying, yeah, when I get famous and hang with Jay-Z, I said, you you can't even handle your friends talking about you when they disagree <laughs> with you. So how are you going to handle some strangers who are intentionally handle your mom reading it or hearing it, hearing it from friend at church or at work or at school or wherever? Yeah, right. <laughs> so how, how are you going to deal with a stranger who's intentionally just just an uh, 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 egg on Twitter or a uh, uh, no profile YouTube comment? Just like this whack, this ugly. Then what you gonna do? You gonna lose it. So, but well, we we gonna get into that. So I might do I, I might do I go into that or no? Right. All right. We'll come back. No, to that, right. See, all right. We too early. Yeah, we too early. We too early. So, just to sum it sum it up, because obviously you this super creative. Because like how your mind is going and how you talking about like oh I got this idea like that's kind of how my mind works. Like I just had these crazy ideas and then I'm just obviously I haven't been put in a position yet to where I can bring all this stuff to life, but I know soon it's coming. But if for somebody is to say, what is it that you just did for a living? Would you just say super creative? Like what how would you define that? Um oh uh, uh <laughs> I think it's I, I understanding the context of, of how we meet. Um, but it would be super easy. So I probably wouldn't say I'm super creative. I'd probably laugh and look at you and say, um, I I get to I get to create I get to create content with um entrepreneurs, celebrities, um, uh, founder-led business owners. I do really well with people. So whether you have a huge company or or not just one single person. You know what I mean? Whether you're a designer who work has 500,000 people working for them or has five people working for you or has, has zero people working for you. It's all the same to me. Um, 
I don't I, I have this weird sort of um, I always I don't I know why sometimes I uh, feel like people think I am this like celebrity brand creator. I just I just happen to work with all of these people. I just happen to work on I think personally, I think the project that catapulted them, that ignited them to be the brands that they became. You know, I I when we when I worked with Ashton Kutcher, he was a huge movie star. He had a huge television show. Um, but he wanted a production company. And 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 by being in punk and him being seen creating, we got to show everybody exactly what the modern creator sort of looked like, which was exactly what we look like, by the way, off camera. And now I think about how selfies and you know social media sort of evolved that narrative and lets us participate off camera. Or or Sharon Osborne and the Osbournes, they were, you know, I mean, they weren't as culturally relevant as they've become. And I think that the Osbournes is the show that kind of helped America understand that, you know, that we're, we're all just like them or in one way or another. And then right. for us, that trifecta was, um, the trifecta was newlyweds with Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey and Jessica now, you know, a billion dollar brand and, and Nick Lachey killing it on literally every single show on Netflix. Married Vanessa Manillo, now Vanessa Lachey, one of my, v, one of our VJs on TRL. So it's like, I love that energy that I got to be, you know, a part of, but they all happen to be celebrities because I happen to work at MTV. I it was my job to go around telling people what shows they should be in. Like I pitched, I pitched Foxy. I did a pilot with Foxy Brown and her whole family. I'm so mad about it. I did. I don't know why I'm talking about that, but I'm, talking, I'm thinking about like some of my. I'm thinking about some of my fails. I'm like I I, pitched, I would go around finding really cool artists that I thought were culturally relevant that we can now include in this like new new form of narrative where you don't have to have an album to be able to talk about something you don't have to be in the news to be able to talk about something you could just be in a reality show and show people the difference so with jessica simpson it was showing people the the humility and how humble and and how not fancy you know she was that was the whole point of that show was for america to stop comparing her to britney and to christina that's the whole point of that show was stop comparing me to these dancers who wear these costumes. And that's just not, she's, that's just not who she is. And, and, right. and I loved that reality TV for a long time until 2007 to nine, I would say, you know, and, and that's when Facebook bigger than, you know, Facebook allowed, you know, people to sign up that had more than just like the EDU email address. If you remember back when Facebook, like, gated you know you had to be like an edu email so as yeah. an mtv exec i went back to my alma mater wag i gotta get on facebook i gotta know it was there and I, I remember telling the cast of of laguna beach in the hills i was like lauren conrad and kristen i'm like you can't go on facebook because if you go on facebook people will see what you're doing before the show's on air and and then i left mtv in 2007 so like the worst advice that i could have given <laughs> By the way, two two huge brands from that generation that have like are still killing it, you know. Um, yeah. probably hundred million dollar brands. I have to look into that, by the way. But um, but it's just like the power of media shifted. So and I'm all in, I'm all in on the digital piece, and I'm all in on owning content and TV. We don't own content, you sell it to the network, network owns it. They might com they commission it from you, or they'll like pay to play, and there's like other ways that they can you know we can get contractual or whatever. In America, right. you you give that up. In every other country, in most countries, it's actually illegal. You have mm. to commission the project with somebody who has an equitable stake in it. That's why people go out of the country, and that's why Tyra went out of the country to do Top Model, and then brought Top Model back to America as an international format because then she was able to license it to all the other countries. If it was owned in America, she wouldn't have gotten that paycheck for all those other countries the way that that deal works. Um, wow. Podcasts, get podcasts, give us that. So that's why everyone should be, every, right, and right now podcasts are like TV, film, podcast, book, social media. I think that Radio. podcasts, yeah, right? It, it feels like a category instead of a content type. And podcast, yeah. the power of a podcast is that someone's, Someone knows your address and says, yo, when you 
create something, ping it to me. I want to know. <laughs> I'm subscribed. Right. I'm, I want to listen. You know what I mean? And, and it, because of the audio nature of it, it's ridiculous. Um, the places where audio can go, where the visual stimulation isn't required. And then you do what you're doing here with video. And like, you know, I love that, by the way. And the video is great. It lives on blogs. Can I drop, can I give a, can I give a, I don't know why I want to say this, but can I give an amplification tip here? The, go ahead. Do you mind? The, 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 the video is so important because if you have a blog, you use um, a blog amplifier. So my favorite blog amplifier is called Q. So vpe.tv slash Q U U U. And what that does is it allows you to upload your blog rel into a block aggregator. And now people subscribe to this block aggregator and they say, if there's um, a blog about podcasting in entertainment, I want to be notified. And because of the meta tags that I would have inputted in when I upload what this blog is, and at a, I'm alerting the people who are looking for this type of information. And those are right. forward thinking. Those are the forward thinkers who are sharing blogs on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on social media, turning it into content turning it into content, putting it on their own blogs. And the whole future of the content market is going to be collaboration. It's going to be syndication. It's going to be non-exclusive amplification, non-exclusive um, distribution, um, especially as advertisers shift from television to mm -hmm. digital. Because TV, I'm throwing a lot out there. I don't know. Here's my TV, my TV theory. TV was invented by advertisers, right? So TV, so there was video. So there's video, right? And then there's yeah. privately funded video, which to be honest is movies, privately funded video movies, and then publicly funded video or ad controlled video was television up until social media came in. And so right. now in social media was really social media marketing more than advertising, but that got you see now where it gets messy because now there you do run ads that have mm. real call to actions. So, so why I love podcasting is the ownership ability. You have the ability to draw so many things, even getting credits on IMDb. You can't get a credit for having a digital series on IMDb, but you can if you're a podcaster. And that means all of your guests get your podcast on their page too. So it's like a huge form of discovery. It's yeah. a powerful tool. It's full creative control. That's the main thing. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's the main thing. And like I said, y'all, this I ain't gonna lie. We might have to split this into two parts now. <laughs> like I might have it to where we stop at a part. We are gonna see. Let's let's just. All see. right. Well, I'll, all right. On so, that, by the way, can I say ownership and responsibility too? With with own, with having full control over it, right? So there's ownership and responsibility. So the responsibility creatively is like it's like going to the gym alone. Oh man, <laughs> I'm so much more honest when I got like someone else with me pushing me or driving me or you know like it just naturally am. So it, there, there's yeah. that responsibility that yes that has, that comes with with um, with the ownership and that's liberating. Yeah, no, definitely. And well, I ain't gonna lie. When it comes to me in the gym, I ain't gonna lie. I like being by myself. But most people, you're right. Most <laughs> people need somebody to go with them because I know people who need the training because they say if they don't have a trainer, they're not gonna do it and they ain't not gonna do it right. And see me, I ain't got results. I like where I'm going, so I'm a little different. But everybody, I like me. that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you hear the word, just the first thing to come to mind. When you hear the word superstar, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I, so superstar uh, size and and um, magnitude, uh, magnetism, almost like polarity. So a superstar has the ability to grab headlines, to grab attention, to grab um, the, your eyeball, your your feed, to grab attention. You know, a superstar has real energy associated with um, the momentum of the projects that they touch. And and I think superstars probably if you if you they probably are super I don't know super streams also they, if you were to like look at the anatomy of a superstar there's probably like hundreds or thousands of like smaller micro audiences and smaller micro groups and lots of different ways people relate to that person that I would never have expected or even know or under or will comprehend but we're all connected to this person one way or another because of how unique and symbiotic i don't know you know they are 
it, that could be it could be a school it could be a, a, a background it could be a shared shared a, a, a huge list of shared experiences we love celebrities who go through the things that we go through right. we love them we never forget you know um we never forget our experiences and and and, and where we were when things happen to the people you know we care about and celebrities especially superstars i think included okay when you hear the word pressure what's the first thing that comes to mind oh psh. <laughs> no <laughs> it's fake fake news it's actually pressure i i don't be, pressure is uh it's like the teflon is my, my <laughs> defense mechanism is my I'm glad that we're talking about this in in a mental health capacity. Actually, um, I don't take on pressure. Um, I take on responsibility. I take on um, I take on being impeccable in my word. And on the outset, I'm I'm very clear with those you know directives. Um, being creative is extremely emotional. It's just the inherent nature of of the beast of being being corporately creative, you know, like I worked with like big brands. That's, that's a hard, this, you, I got to, I got to, I was well, so lucky I trained in Times Square when I did, you know, use right. both sides of my brain. Um, but, but I think that with pressure challenge, maybe if we were playing some type of, you know, word game, I would throw back challenge to you. But again, I, I, the challenge is uh, just an obstacle that we we're going to overcome. I just sit, we're a decision away from. So I don't, I don't let that, I don't let that stress me. Um, that being said, because I come from a corporate background and I do work with clients, sometimes you have to show pressure. And sometimes, okay. sometimes showing, sometimes seeing pressure is like a client's like understanding that it's important as important to them as to you as it is you know to them so um i'm not saying that you can just shrug it off when some you know when you're clearly under pressure you're five minutes away right. from but you know what um i'll tell you what maybe i'll say this i work in cable tv and now i work in digital tv i'm not i'm not i'm not in an ER, I'm not a doctor. I'm not like some not saving. I'm, I'm changing lives, inspiring lives, but I'm not like doing, you know. So, and I, I think I've always been aware of that. I, I, and by the way, yeah. as you're saying, like ch challenge or like pressure, what's pre like? I know what, what's pressure for, for me was like, spring break 2005. We couldn't find Trishel 30 minutes before Say What karaoke and. One of the PAs was like, um, we know where she is. And then and me and our, our, our assistant went and found her on the beat. Like, pressure? <laughs> There's Let so me many tell you different something. things. <laughs> it's just, so, I, so now you're the one we can blame. Because see, when me and my friends went to college, I didn't go to college until 2012. So that was long gone. And I'm still mad at yeah. you <laughs> and everybody at BET for all of a sudden when we get a little older, y'all want to take away spring bling and all that stuff. <laughs> Man, whatever. Oh, right. by the way, yeah. shout out to Ananda who taught me how to, who taught, literally taught me how to spring break. Like, um, that's so funny. They were some good uh, times though. I'll tell you what though. There were some good, my like first, it. my first spring break, uh, not my first spring break. I remember as like a talent assistant and Tyrese was on jet skis and he wouldn't take his necklace off. And, and we were all like for 30 minutes, we're like, you're going to lose your necklace. So stop. And he was riding hard and doing things on the wheels or whatever. And, and he lost his necklace. And I, I screwed that. I looked for that for like two hours a day for like three days. I think I went out there. I was, I was definitely sunburned from looking. I never found it. I the bet. scars it's of the scars of pop culture, right? <laughs> right. Sp Jerry Springer break. You know, I was part of that. So it's kind of interesting to look back at those. Um, uh, the, the most scarring moment, apparently, um, and I talked to Mandy more about this in my podcast, was was her fashionably loud performance as a 16-year-old in the middle of spring break. It was a very scarring experience. To say the least, okay. I laugh because I laugh because she was able to turn it into like a movie moment, and um, I think like it was that year that she did Princess Diaries, and she was able to like, you know, have a last laugh and get get through that like pop culture that that spring break performance, you know, thing. But 
um now re refresh my memory what happened with what's that mandy moore oh no i mean i think back then on spring break it was just you know it was, it was like what you saw on mtv and uh, you know, okay you know, okay okay spring break culture was so it just wasn't the place for a, a, a 16 year old to be singing a love song to be honest <laughs> There we go. There we go. Like, okay. Back in the day, it was more of what was it like Gwen Stefani, Eve, um, maybe like Limp Biscuit would have been, you know, the performance, you know, something a little bit more high octane, but it was not, it was not that. That's yeah, that, that it was not. Okay. So I went ahead and defined superstars as a high profile and extremely successful per performer or athlete. Then I went ahead and defined pressure it says continuous physical force exerted on or against an object by something in contact with it. All right. So now you won Sorry. awards. Tell us about them. I applied. That was the first thing I've done that set me on the course to winning an award. 25 years it took me to win the three awards. If you're watching right now that I, I am boastfully throwing in my background, um, a silver communicator award, a gold W3 award, and my first Emmy. Um, in 25 years, been working in TV. Um, and, I, and I won that from this, like I, I'm sitting right now in, in like my guest bedroom. Um, you know, this was my sort of work from home solution. So uh, I bring that up because I've, I've been on sets. I've been, I've traveled and I've worked with like top notch, you know, names. It's just been, it's awesome what has been achievable from the seat um but awards most people think that like someone's walking around handing out grammys and oscars and tonys and or, or they don't even realize that there are hundreds if not dozens of qualifying awards that go to podcasters or marketers or um, people who work with video that appears on television or in alternative sort of like views um and I like helping people be award winners for a couple of reasons. One, because you want to be on the list. When If I'm looking for someone, if I'm looking to hire a podcaster, I'm probably maybe going to go to like a top of podcast awards and maybe work backwards from that. By the way, if that happens to be your methodology, then on IMDb, you can connect that. You can connect the award right. to your podcast and be discovered that way. So for example... Um, for the for the Oscars that just passed, I was hired to cast a thirty second spot that ran twice after the um, after both of the uh, what's that? Well, one was before. No, I think both of them were before. Uh, it was the, about the filmmakers. It was about the filmmakers who um, got the booster and they went to work. It actually aired twice, and, and it aired right after the Godfather re, like cast mm -hmm. kind of reunion moment, and then. Um, right after the uh, what was the first one? I forget. But anyway, the good spot. Anyway, but I literally cast a commercial. It was a ten thousand dollar buyout. So I literally, all I needed to do was find people below the staff um, crew, so like uh, gaffers and, and crew members that were not nominated for themselves, but did work on nominated crews. And I was able to search right. IMDb, find qualified people. I picked the people who paid for IMDb Pro because I know that's expensive. And if, if you invest in yourself as a creative, I see that. Like, I just want you to know, I see, I know that there's an option free or not. So I know that you're paying $10 a month. To me, that's a signifier that you're serious about taking this creative seriously. Yeah. And, and that, that, that being, be, that also, that investment, I, I, it's interpreted that way. Like, here I am telling you, I literally pick people who uploaded their photos first because i knew they were paying for it that's the reason why i had i had an option who to pick and that really made a big impact and that's that's important so so awards are important you know it's not about and, and also the great thing about awards is most awards you're winning in a group that's the best part you know I'm, yeah I'm, I'm excluding best actor and actor most of us will win best podcast there's four or five people on our podcast teams or, or seven or however two i don't know um or, or best website or best marketing stack, mm -hmm. or best female communicator, or best LGBTQ um, digital series. So um, if, if you don't, by the way, so vpe.tv, my website, if you want to come find out, you know, um, in my creator accelerator, what type of awards you may qualify for. Um, and that's something that I'm excited to sort of share. But that's why I think awards are so important. You got to ask for them. You got to apply. 
Um, sometimes there's an application fee. Sometimes you have to pay to be in the academy. So like I have to pay to be in the academy of arts and TV sciences to qualify to submit another $250 for um, a project if I'm applying for the Emmys. Mm -hmm. But if you win an Emmy, for example, you don't have to pay for the trophy. There are some other award um, services that you pay a fee and you get an, you pretty much know you're going to win an award. And then, and then there's another incentive to purchase, um, you know, a trophy. So, but, and I say win two, by the way, I don't care which two <laughs> win two. What's yours? That world's greatest superstar. I got this a superstar. Video. I like that. We bring this to life. Okay. I got put that in next time. Put that in a frame, like be it. That's it. And I see that. <laughs> I see it in you too, for sure. For sure, appreciate. Mm -hmm. See, see, see. Okay, so now let's move on to it because see, you didn't. This is definitely gonna be two parts, but <laughs> I definitely I appreciate. You know, some people don't like when people talk and like they talk, 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 talk. But if you talking about something, it's fine with me. I don't care because see, <laughs> most people they talk, but they don't be talking about nothing. But see, if you <laughs> you got some gems for some people who say they want to be in this industry, and everybody doesn't want to be in front of the camera. Some people, this is for good for people who want to be behind the scenes. So they're getting some a lot of stuff that I had never heard before. And I know these people ain't heard before. So it's good with that. So now let's move more into a question that you know, and we're gonna move to an, another segment in a minute. But why do you think people are so obsessed with wanting to be a star? Oh. I, I mean, it's like moth to a flame, right? I mean, it's just the attract. I think it's just the natural attraction to light and energy. There's probably some deep physics or or simple physics explanation to it, but it's all about matter and energy and brilliance. And I think that I think we just are inherently, you know, are attracted to um, energy of massive volume, and I think that's. And, and and I think that um, I think that we think there's safety in that, maybe mm -hmm. you know, maybe I don't know. So there's prob there's probably I'm I mean I'm I'm okay to go sort of like and say I, I don't know what I don't know, but I know there's something deep rooted, like <laughs> you know, actions that took place for us to have to to look up at the stars the way that we do, um, as if they're familiar or as if they're unfamiliar. You know, and so I acknowledge I acknowledge that, but um, but I agree with you. You said something earlier at the top of this conversation about you know uh, be careful of what you ask for. I've seen I've seen people not deal with fame you know well. I've seen people deal with fame so beautifully that you you sort of almost forget they're famous, but they're like literally on like the biggest stars in the entire world, and they have this like they hit this like relationship with press where they can just not even be just like us just not be in the conversation respectfully and and, I, and that that that's changed now and you there was not such a relationship back 10 maybe maybe 10 years ago especially 20 years ago um yeah. where press had all control you know or or it was a legal it was a legal situation there was no because relationships weren't important back then and I think relationships are important now. I think we're, we're living proof of that. Like this is this is what NFTs are. <laughs> this is what social media is. This is like we're monetizing relationships. We're no longer monetizing services or, or products or brands even anymore. You know, so that's interesting. Here's the thing. And you made a comment. You said that. And then I got to move on to the next segment. But sure. you made a comment. You said people are. Um, what was it? You said people, some people, you forget they're celebrities and they handle it so beautifully. So in some cases, some people were just like that from the beginning, but some people grew to that. If we look at, you brought up Beyonce, right? Now, first of all, you can't even talk about her because her, the beehive going to let you have it. <laughs> Boy, even back in the day, you've seen old documentaries and she would say stuff like she couldn't even get out of bed because people talked about her so bad that she couldn't, you know, she couldn't deal with it. And, you know, she worked to where she is now, but it's, it's people that was like that. They they grew into that. You know, some people, you know, for me, even with me, like dealing with like scrutiny and, you know, um, what was it? Something I was watching up there. Was, uh, they was like, uh, light them up. Like, you know, some people come to your house with pitchforks and like uh, 
torches like that's i've dealt with stuff like that and i barely said anything so i felt as though it's better to deal with a younger than older because when you deal yeah. with a younger you kind of grow into it versus you know you 32 and it's the first time somebody didn't ever disagree with you and you having a temper tantrum you don't know what's going on so yeah. let's let's put a pin in that so i can go into one of our segments what does this have to do with mental health as as we all know every week we always go into how does this pertain to mental health how does this topic go into mental health so according to the mental health effects of being a celebrity it says that celebrities are always in the spotlight for the movie they just started or the album they just released and regardless of what they're doing the cameras are always flashing as they take a, their dog for a walk grab a cup of coffee trip on the red carpet at the met gala or publicly announce their divorce it doesn't matter the world is interested while most of us can't identify with this the life of a fa famous person we can imagine the extensive pressures that and stresses the limelight plus them especially when it comes to dealing with mental illnesses like depressions anxieties and substance use disorder and even the the crazy events or the the unfortunate events when people you know get into accidents or you know the left eye burning the house down or unfortunately suicide so it says this begs the questions are celebrities more susceptible to mental illness so i say yes but as somebody who's, you know, in a sense, you've seen all these people, been around all these people, talked to all these people behind camera. What is your what is your take on that question? Yeah, I think that there's there is unfortunately um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but there is some real science that speaks to the fact that and not on, not only celebrities, but people in media who are exposed to prolonged um, uh, dr dramatic uh footage that otherwise they would not have seen or been exposed to and and have to in a very norm un unhealthy way normalize it for output for work purposes so all the reality editors who for hours have to watch just um manipulation happening in front of them be, to be exposed to I'm trying to think of some like unique ways there are some obvious ways that you know obviously I can I can I can point out but the unique ways um fil, uh, uh, news editors who every, every single day are getting are getting a barrage of car crashes and, and bloody images that they mm -hmm. they're the ones that they have to edit you know they're the ones that are, are blurring but they are the ones that see it and and I've been in the network you know it's it doesn't get blurred out uh, to be honest it doesn't get blurred so 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 those things don't get blurred out on like the network level they get blurred out on the um the, like in the territory so to speak so like that's why um certain things would get edited out in the american version like the oscars certain things got edited out live in the american version because of american standards versus in australia where it, they don't right. have the same standards so they were able to see you know and ex that experience that that moment differently than we did um and it's that editing that manipulation of reality um uh, you know I, I bring up responsibility a lot uh you know the responsibility we have of, of creating an image not just publishing an image or right. or, or, or 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 creating the image but the fact of creating it and publishing it and putting it out there and, and putting it into action you know there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that and um uh, I, you know, I think, and I think that that's why social media platforms, new social media platforms evolving will be something that will help us edit the way a certain storytelling mechanisms happen or don't happen. You know, right now on Instagram, we love a good transition, you know, um, which is interesting just as a storytelling mechanism. Transitions right. are, are an important piece of storytelling. Instagram seems to be a great place for the transition of storytelling. If you want the montage, you go to TikTok. The montage, you know, who doesn't love a good cinematic mo So it's so cool to see sort of how, how these platforms can adapt. You know, if you want to read the script, you go to Discord. If you want to read the script, you really want to know word for word, you know, what's going on. So it's cool how, how these platforms are able to, to let you identify build a relationship with all this content on all these different platforms in really unique ways and you and to bring it back to mental health i think that's like the the main difference of, of how social media and these digital platforms 
has is, has had an impact on on our relationship with content is because now we are exposed to it on so many other levels. Um, your description, what you read earlier with celebrities, if you would have replaced that with my mom and dad, it would all be true. <laughs> They're right. just, my mom and dad are have a camera on them all the time when they go grocery shop. Yeah, that's exactly true. By the way, this is the lifestyle we you know we now live in. Um, and they they have different experiences, but but I think people in media, ex especially in mass media, are exposed to um, other people's very harsh and real realities. And there's a lot of editing that happens in mass media on on networks because of volume. You know, it has to be a 30 minute show. It's 24 minutes of content and then a 30 minute show, tw 22 and a half, depending on what network you're watching. So, right. Um, yeah. The thing is, you made a comment. You said, I don't have the numbers, but I do because I found. Oh, them. yes. Good, good. So it says mental health obviously is not discriminatory. Therefore, it affects celebrities just like the rest of the population. But because the spotlight is always on them, we hear more about their experiences. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 25 percent of the U.S. population suffers from mental illness. And while celebrities are not more successful to develop a mental health condition, they do make up part of that 25%. So next time you assume this or that about the celebrity has a perfect life, think again, they could be dealing with something our eyes don't see. So in your case, we could always ask, have you ever struggled mentally? Obviously I have, I'm sure you have. And with you, with you, which you kind of brought up earlier when you kind of said like, when you had shows that where you thought was greenlit and then boom, now nah, we can't do it. Well, you thought maybe this person was going to come through and now nah, we ain't doing it. And how even when you brought up early with Nick Cannon and you was like originally he was supposed to host TRL, it didn't work. Obviously, it worked out for better. But in the moment, I'm sure you was pissed like, dang, we thought we had him. Mm -hmm. So have you ever been maybe behind the scenes close with somebody, which I'm sure you have, but close with a celebrity or close with somebody that's in that spotlight and kind of seen them break down? And if you did, you don't have to say name unless you want to. But. How do you know how they overcame it? 